the assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Marcello Rebelo de Souza, President of the Portuguese Republic. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Marcello Rebelo de Souza, President of the Portuguese Republic, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Senor. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Secretary General, Mr. Vice President of the General Assembly, I ask you to transmit to the Madam President Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcés a very special congratulation on her election for her personal career, for the priorities she has defined, for the progress you represent in gender equality at the United Nations, for the advanced and informal interactive dialogue, a sign of increased transparency of the General Assembly. Mr. Secretary General, Portugal salutes and reaffirms its support, full support to the defined priorities, to the interve interventions it has developed in its lucid, dynamic, and exceptional mandate. Multilateralism, based on international right and, interna and the Charter of the United Nations, the reform of the United Nations, the prevention of conflicts, maintenance, and peace, building international crime, oceans, maritime security, combat to terrorism and international crime, oceans and maritime security, climate change, the Agenda 2030, gender equality, and your trust in our youth. All of this towards the permanent upholding of the human rights. Strengthen multilateralism, always, for this reason, we do not understand and we rather deplore unilateral tropism as disinvestment in international organizations. They represent a political short-sightedness which runs the risk of repeating the mistakes of almost a century ago. The reform of the United Nations requires the commitment of all member states. Maintaining the status quo is a way of gutting multilateralism and multiplying risks, conflicts, without prevention, underdevelopment, and the violation of human rights. As well, not reforming the Security Council with a broad-based consensus is to ignore the geopolitics of the 21st century, which requires, at the very least, the presence of the African continent, Brazil, and India. Conflict prevention, peace building, and peacekeeping, and institutional, institutional capacity building operations, as Portugal is doing in nine United Nations missions, six of which in Africa. I would especially mention our presence in MINUSCA and in MINUSMA. Migration and refugees which requires understanding the causes of growing human mobility, the need for dialogue between societies of origin, transit, and destination, the global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration, and the global compact for refugees and promotion of the right to education in emergency situations. Portugal unequivocally supports these pacts accepts and will continue to accept migrants, refugees, and other displaced persons. It launched, and the former President George Sampaio, the global platform for Syrian students, and calls for the widest involvement in the rapid response mechanism for higher education. The fight against terrorism which has led to the creation of the UN Office of Counterterrorism, the first conference of heads of counterterrorism agencies, and the sixth revision of the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy. The guarantee of justice for victims of serious international crimes through the International Criminal Court 
which began to consider the crime of aggression in 2017, a step in which Portugal played an active role and is expected to move towards universal adoption with the accession of more member states. Oceans and maritime security, meaning multilateralism and international law. Portugal is actively involved in the preparations for the second United Nations Oceans Conference in 2020 and stands ready to assume all the responsibilities that are involved in the organization. Maritime security in places such as the coasts of Somalia or the Gulf of Guinea, where Portugal is present in the UNAFOR Atalanta operation within the framework of the European Union and the Yaoundé process alongside the African Union and the countries in the region. And we are going further, creating in the Azores a center for the defense of the ocean, a platform for different international organizations. Global governments of the oceans with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change for us is a just fight for all of us. For us, these are structural issues which we do not change to suit short-term trends and players. We regard the right to a healthy environment as a fundamental right. We support carbon neutrality by 2050. And with Lebanon, we are jointly sharing the working party on the Global Compact for the Environment. Basically, there are two different views of the world. One, short term, is unilateral or minilateral protectionist with domestic populist discourse minimizing multilateralism in anything to do with sustainable development, prone to climate change denial, opposed to global compacts about migration and refugees, interested only in conflict prevention and peacekeeping, where and when, occasionally, it matters to it, and matters more in terms of economic rather than political power. The other opposing view, which we share, is multilateral, open, and favorable to the search of, for global governments committed to sustainable development, respectful of international law, the charter, and human rights as values and principles, never as a means of conveniences. And we are confident that in the medium to long term, this view will prevail as it has prevailed in the European Union, which has given Europe the longest period of peace in living memory and the highest levels of welfare and social protection. All of this when we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Declaration of Human Rights and the International Law Commission. This is the appropriate time to call for consensus on the adoption of the biennial resolution on the moratorium of the death penalty, which is to be submitted to this General Assembly. Madam President, Excellencies, our view of the world situation and of the role of the United Nations, which, as I said, is in complete agreement with that of the Secretary General, explains our positions on the so-called regional questions with global reach. But let me now dwell on some that are of special relevance to Portugal. We salute the strengthening of the community of Portuguese-speaking countries, currently presided by Cape Verde, to be followed by Angola, whose contributions to stability and development I wish to highlight. The CPLP, enjoys magnificent cooperation with the UN and pursues the goal of seeing the Portuguese language, one of the most widely spoken in the world, adopted as an official language at the United Nations. The steps taken in Guinea-Bissau in preparation for election in November are also appreciated. We highlight the growing importance of the African Union 
integrative and essential for the peace and sustainable development. The intensification of the partnership with United Nations and the historic step of the joint declaration of peace and friendship between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Our wish that the elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo will be held in a safe, free and fair manner and that the results will be respected by all. The important developments on the Korean Peninsula opening up positive prospects for complete, verifiable and irreversible denuclearization and demonstrating only the commitment, not only and courage of the parties involved and the count contribution of the regional partners of the United Nations and mainly the role of diplomacy for world peace, world peace and security. We note the signing of the Maritime Boundary Treaty between Australia and Timor-Leste and the auspices of the Secretary General of the United Nations, confirming as well the effectiveness of the peaceful settlement of disputes through conciliation under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Unfortunately, certain parts of the Middle East and the Maghreb continue to show signs of permanent political, social and economical instability. In Libya, the international community must unite to assist with a humanitarian and security situation and the creation of a solid state. Yemen remains the scene of one of the greatest humanitarian crises today, affecting especially the most vulnerable women and children. Only negotiated political solution through the mediation of the United Nations and respect for international humanitarian law, will be able to reverse this increasingly tragic situation. Equally tragic is humanitarian crisis in Syria, with one of the largest flows of refugees within and outside the region. Here also, only a substantive, inclusive and UN-mediated political solution will tend to ensure effective and broad-based international support for reconstruction. In fact, stabilization and peace in the Middle East will only be possible with the resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Common sense demands the resumption of a credible negotiation process addressing the final statue status issues, including the issue of, of Jerusalem, and leading to a viable two-state solution based on coexistence by Israel and Palestine in peace and security. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, as mentioned yesterday by Secretary General Antonio Guterres, true Patriotism is only complete with cosmopolita cosmopolitanism. Portugal believes that multilateral action, political dialogue, and diplomatic wisdom are the only possible route to harmonious coexistence between nations and peoples. And that very short-term views or perspectives, however appealing they may appear to be, are just a flash in the pan, which does not last, will not last, and will not solve the world's true problems. As Nelson Mandela said, a, f a fundamental concern for others in our individual and community love lives would go a long way in making the world the better place we so passionately dream of. This is the noble mission of this institution. It is also the reason for Portugal's deep commitment to the United Nations. United Nations, and nor a short-sighted fashion. The United Nations are a long-lasting universal need. Thank you very much.
On behalf of the General Assembly, allow me to thank His Excellency Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, the President of the Portuguese Republic. Please remain seated as we escort His Excellency.